Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Now, before we get into today's show, I want to give a disclaimer about what we are about to cover today. It's really easy to fall into the beat up on the Royals club, right? And typically, a lot of people will just turn off to this kind of content because it's kind of just what everybody does. And we're not going to be second-guessing decisions that they've made in history, things that they've done, comments that they've made, images that have been captured that are very questionable about their history. I don't want to fall into that category with today's show because what we're about to cover today has far deeper implications as it relates to the end times, the second coming of Christ, and the Antichrist. I'll do my best just to present the information without getting too emotional about it and then to let you decide what all of this means. If it's all sheer coincidence or something very real. Now, I want to start off the show by saying that King Charles has already jokingly admitted that he is descended from one of the most evil bloodlines in human history. Vlad the Impaler, better known as Dracula. Now, he has not repented of that family history, which, of course, is a common thing to do as a Christian, right? We're supposed to repent of family histories. This is a common practice in the Bible. You, instead of glorifying it and joking about it, he it almost came across as though he was admitting it as a warning, didn't it? Now, many of you who know your Bibles will remember that many prophets, they reminded the current generations of the sins of the past generations, didn't they? The Israelites were talked about later on in the Bible, about how they were wicked and sinful. And the Bible talks about their past disobedience and wickedness. So when bringing up family bloodlines, it's important to repent of that because it can carry curses, can't it? You guys have heard me do this before. I've told you about the problems that my father had, things that I had to work through myself. You don't glorify the, those sins. You repent of them and move forward, don't you? So let's get into the King Charles coronation, the Corona Nation. Notice I intentionally misspoke the word coronation. And you're going to see why a little bit later in the show. Let me say good morning to everybody. And we'll go ahead and get started. Now I guarantee you, you're going to see things on this show today that you have not seen on the other coverages of this. And I'm looking forward to presenting this because it is of the utmost importance that we understand what is going on here. We're entering a new era of the crown. Now, exactly how the crown fits into world politics, geopolitics, and all this, I don't claim to know exactly what kind of power they have? I do know that everybody kisses their ring. So they must have some kind of power. I almost wonder if their power is actually the church. We'll get into some of that today. Now, there are a lot of other channels out there that are very good at, you know, looking at the power structure of world geopolitics and kind of giving their best guess of where all this fits in. But... Based on the predictive programming in television, media, movies, I believe that we just witnessed the crowning of the King of the North. The King of the North from Game of Thrones. Now, King Charles has emerged as a deeply symbolic figure of what we all just went through for the past four years. The Corona Nation. Directly related to the crown which is, of course, is the Spanish word, Corona. Now, they chose to have this coronation fall. Are you ready for this? The coronation fell on a Sabbath day. 
which you will very quickly see is likely a black Sabbath ritual. And it fell 60 plus 60 plus 60 days after the queen died. Here are the dates right here. She died 9-8-2022. Coronation happened on 5-6-2023. That's 240 days. 60 plus 60 plus 60, which of course is 666. You can't make this up. Oh, but there's more. The beast number 237 emerges out of some of the research that I did over the weekend as well. We'll cover that a little bit later in the show. But essentially the coronation begins with a procession of representatives all around the world coming in to bend the knee, to swear fealty to the king of the north. At Westminster Abbey. Here's an image of each representative for each of the countries coming in like a procession. Several of them bended the knee and probably all of them did behind closed doors because this is what we saw happen throughout the Game of Thrones series. Now, weirdly, I saw these cryptic paintings on the wall that kind of reminded me of I Pet Goat 2. It's supposed to be Mary holding Jesus, but she's dressed in all black. Here's the image from I Pet Goat 2. Mary holding Jesus with the unholy red ring around her head. Now we covered all this in previous years. Today's show will be a conglomeration of a lot of that research. We're going to be going into past videos about the roots of Charles II Dracula and past videos we've done researching the royal family. Now, of course, th these images have probably always been in Westminster Abbey. This is probably Jesus here as an adult. Here's him as a baby. Now, where did we see these images? Well, we did a deep dive decode on these images in a mosaic in the Hagia Sophia Mosque that had turned away from Christian Orthodox teaching and had been turned into a mosque. Now, at one point in the beginning of the coronation, you've probably already heard by now, there was a Satan sighting. I'm not making this up. Some weird, shadowy, cloaked figure scurries across the hall with a broom or a staff in his hand, and nobody knows what this is. Now, they'll probably come up with some cover story, but as it sits now, this has become mainstream news. Now, I saw this thing that, you're, that I'm about to show you. I'm going to show you a video of it. I saw this thing about 8 a.m. Central Time on Saturday as I was beginning to pick apart the coronation. And then later that day, I looked through my emails, one of you sent me this, and that had told me that it had gone mainstream. I wasn't sure if anyone was even going to notice this, because people are fast asleep. But apparently the mainstream picked up on it. A shadowy cloaked figure runs past Westminster Abbey during the coronation. People are talking about it. Now usually they'll do a bait and switch, so they'll leak the story like this, and then later they'll come up with a completely, quote-unquote, plausible explanation as to what this was, okay? A cover story. But let's take, let me check in with you guys. We're going to take a look at the video. Now, I'll be pausing this live stream intermittently with some of the coronation coverage just to avoid copyrights. I'm not sure how they feel about these copyrights with the coronation. They could be very sensitive about it which means we'll only be able to play four or five seconds at a time. But let's take a look at the shadowy cloaked figure that runs across the hall. This is unbelievable. Now let me give you the pretext for this. This is the first five or ten minutes of the footage from the coronation. You see the what appears to be the pyramid all-seeing eye above the doorway through which these men walk. 
and it, and right after they walk through the doorway, you see the shadowy close. Let's play that back. Now I'm going to zoom it up so you can see it a little bit better. That was the wide angle. Let's zoom in to the close angle view of this. Now, some people could say, oh, that's some guy just sweeping the floor. But why would you sweep the floor during a coronation? Let's zoom this in and play it again. And why is the guy sweeping the floor wearing a shadowy cloak? Weird. So, now, let's keep going with this. Because then Charles swears his oaths to God and country. And as with all these coronations, they're pretty much all the same. We haven't probably seen one recently. I mean, many of you were probably present at past coronations if you're in your 60s or 70s. I don't know when the last one was. But this one, I guess, was a pretty big deal because Queen Elizabeth was reigning for like so long, right? So I guess we, have, we haven't seen a coronation in a long time because that would have been all the way back when she took the queenship, right? So he, he swears an oath to God and country and then they make their way to Buckingham Palace. Let's place on this. Now... Why isn't that playing? Uh, apparently I didn't get the sound on this particular clip. But basically what this guy says is that he's reading from the Bible and the gospel. And the problem with it is that this has to be a black Sabbath. He even recognizes the Sabbath in this clip here. He reads the gospel and then things go off the rails. Let's see if the sound plays on this. I guess it's not. Apparently I didn't pick up the sound on this particular clip. But this is him basically reading the gospel and talking about the Sabbath. There was a good portion of the coronation that was in the Bible. I tried to look at some reactions on the faces of people. Some, some of them seemed pretty shocked. Because they're like, wow, you know, a lot of these people had not seen a coronation before, didn't realize that the, the church was a big, very big part of it. But let's talk about the implications of what that means, because obviously these people are not who they say they are. Receive this all, set under the cross. There you saw the ball set under the cross. I always forget the name of what that thing is. But we had covered that in the past, haven't we? During this part, basically these symbols are given to King Charles. He gets a sword. He gets all these different symbols. He gets the ball under the cross. And this is where things go off the rails. Because he starts talking about the authority that they've been given to rule over this world. The very authority... That even the king of kings, Jesus, rejected during the temptation. They mentioned that Jesus rejected it. So if Jesus rejected this government authority, what, they just decided that they're just going to take over now? Because Jesus didn't take it? And who had the authority to give away? Well, it was Satan himself. Now, if you don't know about this, this is very, very, very important foundational concept of world governments and contradicts fully the interpretation that we're given of Romans 13. Romans 13 reads like we're supposed to submit to governments. The problem is, is that Jesus did not submit to governments, nor did he take leadership of the governments. Why would God tell us? To submit to something that's ruled by Satan. Why would God tell us to serve Satan and submit to Satan? It makes absolutely no sense. 
Now we know that the Bible does not make mistakes, right? So there can't be a contradiction there. There has to be an error in the way it was interpreted, which is Romans 13 is not talking about submitting to world governments. It's talking about the church. That's one interpretation that could correct the conflict, let's say. I've heard other interpretations as well. That it's not about submission, it's about I don't I can't think of the other interpretations off the top of my head, but the main one is it's not they're not talking about governments, they're talking about the church. And so this is another reason why they incorporate the church into this coronation, because if they can't get you on submitting to governments, then they'll get you on submitting to the church, right? Which they rule both of. And this is the big lie of the coronation. Now, the priest starts giving Charles the power of this world, essentially, which is Satan's. And he does this with a series of objects. The sword I mentioned, a ring, he gives him gloves and bracelets. And finally, this orb with a cross. But listen to how he crafts his words when he presents Charles with the orb. And remember always that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. The kingdom of this world are become. Now, what the heck does that mean? Are become Christ's. Well, what that technically should mean is that Christ is not ruling this world right now, which is why Satan was able to get to try to tempt Jesus with rulership. Jesus could have easily said, okay, I'll have my kingdom now, but the Bible doesn't say that. His kingdom is coming when he returns. Not now, not then, when he returns. Now, clearly, we have protections. We're saved through belief in Jesus Christ. We're saved for the end and we have eternity but yes we have to suffer through this life because the devil rules this world this is why sin has run amok this is why jesus said keep your eyes fixed on heaven to when his kingdom will rule this is why he says you must endure until the end because he knew it was going to be hard if jesus was ruling right now why would we have to endure anything wouldn't he make everything right right now of course he would so he is not ruling yet now, other religions teach that he's already taken rulership, but I think that's part of the scam. I know the JWs believe that. They think he took rulership in 1914. I do not believe that. I do not believe he is ruling yet because he would not let us continue to suffer if he was already ruling in heaven. We have to wait until his return. Now, let's keep watching here because as you just heard, technically he told the truth. He says, Jesus Christ are become. Let's listen to it again. And of his Christ. God and of his Christ. Wait, let's play back. And remember always that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. The kingdom of this world are become. They will but who rules now? It's Satan. And these people work for Satan. So he gives him the orb. He essentially gives him basically the, the rulership of this world. Under Satan, of course. Now, things get even more weird. Now, let's delve into this a little bit because why bother why include god as a central part of this coronation ceremony when they don't serve the true god well it's to give power to the false church so that believers follow the false church and then when the deception comes like when they unveil the antichrist or whatever people will believe that won't they because they're legitimizing the church to a degree to for their means so they can seal in the deception now let me check in with you guys and we'll talk about prince charles because this was funny at this point of the coronation several people go up 
and swear their loyalty to King Charles. They bend the knee. The priest and the prince both do it. And as I was watching this, I was like, are you kidding me? He could barely look his father in the eye. He only made eye contact with him like once. And you have to ask yourself why. Now, I'm sure there are some body language experts out there that have already kind of broken this down. And maybe several of the other faces. He is reading off of this card here that this guy's holding. But you would think that his lines were so short that he would have them memorized. Because he didn't say much. He just had to repeat what the other people said. He would not look his father in the eye, which to me was telling. So, here is the massive crowds that were led in by the horses down the avenue to Buckingham Palace. And so, I dug into Buckingham Palace a little bit more. And to demonstrate further what this is all about, I went into Google Earth and aligned the central avenue where all the people Walked, which is right here that you just saw in the previous picture and measured it with a measuring tool and the heading of this avenue in Buckingham Palace is 237 degrees now we had pretty much located that as and identified that as a beast number not the beast number but a beast number which is all starting to make sense now, isn't it? Because Charles had already admitted he was from the bloodline of Dracula. Now, what is this number 237? Well, we call it the beast number because it appears in the movie The Shining, the room 237. With the green bathroom and the woman behind the veil coming through the portal bathtub waters. The dark waters. The dark waters that they will they are injecting us all with right now. It's all about the dark waters. It's the venom, the black goo, the cobra's bite, the two fangs. 237 keeps us in our cage, our beast rib cage, which has two floating, three false, and seven true ribs in that order. For a total of 12 ribs. That is the cage that locks you in and prevents you spiritually from ascending to the throne with the father where the 12 intracranial nerves are. You see, God created our bodies as some kind of a map. A map to glorify him so that we know who the Most High is. We know who our creator is. Because right within the anatomy of our bodies, he reveals truths that relate directly back to the Bible, biblical events. Because he is the Alpha Omega and he knows the beginning from the end. So I was shocked when I went into Google Earth and lined up Buckingham Palace with the avenue to 237 degrees. A number of the beast. Now... Let's watch some portions of a couple of decodes that we did about Dracula and Charles. This one is called The Faculty Dracolty, 96 Degrees, King Charles, Transylvania Homes. Let's watch part of this here. And then we're going to get into Transylvania. Because remember yesterday I told you I was going to look up the properties that King Charles owns in Transylvania. And here they're listed. So all I did is I went into Google Earth. I plotted them. Let me read them to you real quick. King Charles now owns several pop properties in the Romanian region. In Viscri, in the Zalanuli Valley, in Malankrov, and in Breb. So I plotted these as many as I could find on the map. And here 
is what I found. I hope you're sitting down for this one. Now I took a screenshot of this, but you can go and plot all these areas on Google Earth yourself and do a measurement of this. And you will see, I plotted the three here in the general alignment. This is right in Transylvania. The general alignment of these two endpoints is 96 point 96 degrees which is the age at which Queen Elizabeth would die it's almost as if these people have some sort of foreshadowing or foreknowledge some kind of looking glass now of course this third property here doesn't fall on the line but I took the two endpoints the two end lines and again you could do this yourself in Google Earth it takes a little bit of research because you got to find these places, but they give you the names of these villages, and the villages are tiny. And all you do is draw a line, and you'll see that it's 96.96 .96 degrees. Now, we're going to cover one more very bizarre angle about King Charles before we get into the faculty. And I have to cover this because it all links in together. King Charles III seems to have some connection to the wolf what is that well he's depicted in this new series called wolf hall and you would think he'd be mad about it because his family's depicted in a negative light backstabbers hmm dracul akul means piercing and stabbing and this is all about backstabbing Prince Charles loves Wolf Hall series, despite claims his household is just as treacherous. The Prince of Wales has told Hilary Mantle he is a fan of the television adaptation of Wolf Hall, despite claims his own household is just as treacherous. And he ended up even giving this lady a title. The author of this series gave her the title of Dame here are some screenshots from Wolf Hall. I have never heard of this series, nor will I probably watch it. But here she is right here. And the entire series is all about backstabbing. Now, what could all this mean? Well, I decided to look into this because I'm like, man, did I miss something here? I was on this weird uh, rabbit hole looking at Chucky and... And all this stuff, thinking, oh, maybe there's a connection to Chucky and Child's Play. And didn't find anything really there. And I kept digging. And then I found something that was pretty unreal. Here's a picture of the author and her title that she was given for the series Wolf Hall. What did I find that was unreal? Well, when you take King Charles' birthday and you find the anti-date, the mirror date. Here's November 14th. That's his birthday. He was born in 48. And that has 47 days left until the end of the year. So you find the 47th day of the year to find the mirror date. And that date is February 16th, which is one day after the festival of the wolf, Looper, Kalia. So it appears that another wolf has emerged. Now, how all that's going to pan out uh, I guess I guess it's waiting to see right now let's get into this 1998 film called The Faculty Remember, now we're not going to cover The Faculty obviously because that doesn't relate to the subject but I wanted to show you that particular um, video that we did from a couple years ago on Charles now it was actually last year. Here's another video that we did. Let's play this one. This is actually all about the lead lined coffins, coffins of the undead and King Charles heir to the Vlad the Impala, Impaler's bloodline. Sorry, I'm mixing up my words today. Listen. We're going to get into the Queen. Now, several months ago, during a renovation at Notre Dame, uh, basically, they found a lead coffin 
underground in a secret chamber. Now, we had researched lead coffins, and we had found that Princess Diana, along with most of the royal family, including Queen Elizabeth, were all buried in lead coffins. So, we dug a little bit deeper, and we found out that vampires were also buried in lead coffins. Now, why is that the case? Well, according to ancient lore, it was to trap the demon inside of the coffin. And we'll get into all that a little bit later. Sorry, I was later in the show. But first, I wanted to do a follow-up on the show that we did about the sculpture of the man. Let's go back to this. This is from yesterday's show. The sculpture, this sculpture here you see on your screen of a man with planes flying into him. Here it is right here. And you'll remember that this particular sculpture was titled Tar Baby versus St. Sebastian. Of course, has picked this up and they stuck a camera in there to show you how all of this comes full circle. It's all connected in the spiritual realm. So now let's get started on this decode with Queen Elizabeth. Sorry, I had to fast forward to that other part because that was not related to the subject of King Charles. It was actually about Blind Eleven. And that was an artist that who, that particular sculpture that you saw with the planes flying into the human was actually in one of the towers when the tower fell. And that guy actually died with his artwork inside the tower. I can't remember what floor he was on. But it was clear foreshadowing of planes flying in the buildings. Let's keep watching here. And this lead coffin thing. So, here's the story from several months ago. As we switch gears here. Back to Notre Dame. And this lead coffin discovery. Many of you will remember this decode that we did on this. We were already making the connection to vampires. Now, fast forward from when this video aired that I'm just playing right now, and they actually opened it and they found elongated skulls inside of these coffins, confirming what our suspicion was that these were some kind of vampire or Nephilim. Now, of course, they said it was head binding that caused the elongated skulls, but, you know, think of the odds, okay? Now, let's keep watching this. And they still have not opened this thing yet. They're like waiting. They drilled a hole in it and they stuck a camera in there. Realized that the lining was lead. Let's zoom this up a little bit. But what is inside of this is the question. Now they're saying that only nobility are the ones that had enough money to have themselves placed in a lead coffin. But we're also going to examine some of the vampiric roots of lead coffins. Now, why were they digging under Notre Dame Cathedral? Well, you'll remember there was a fire. And remember the spire fell down. And we captured that and recorded that. And we compared it to the scene in the animated film I Pet Go 2, in which a spire also caught fire and fell over. We, in fact, put those videos side by side and found that they were almost an exact match. How can this be? How can an animated film from 2012 have events that had not happened yet? That is the question. Now, the world gets really weird at this point. Here's the sarcophagus. Let me see if we can find the side-by-side -side of uh, Notre Dame I Pet Goat 2. So that was a discovery we made on this channel. We did the side-by-side. -side. Oh, here, here it is. A lot of people mirrored this video that we did. This is probably our video here. Okay, let's get to the part here. Why would they show that in there? Let's see if this is the one. And that's good that they mirrored it because people need to see the truth, right? Let's turn the sound off. So, this is Notre Dame Cathedral, but this came out in 2012, long before the cathedral caught fire. Let's see if they show it here. It falls over. 
that is actually my video here. I did a side by side and they borrowed it here, it looks like. Let's rewind it. This is Supernatural Revelation. There it is right there. Unbelievable. Many of you will remember this video. And it's funny because our video on this is still sitting at like maybe 10,000 views. And the people who snatched it, uh, they're in the millions of views because it, this is unbelievable. But I'm glad the word got out. Let's zoom it up. Look at that. Remember, 2012 and 2019, I guess, is when this happened. Look at all the elements. Supernatural looking glass. I'm just going to play this back a couple times because I can't even believe it now looking at it. How can it be? But it, there it is right there in plain sight. Okay, so let's get back to... Let me check in with you guys, make sure we're connected. And then we'll get back to the rest of this show. All right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. World is waiting for the big reveal. Human-shaped lead sarcophagus found beneath the floor of the fire-ravaged Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris has generated much speculation about its contents. So let, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do next is gonna, I'm, we're going to look up the uh, skulls found inside sarcophagus uh, Notre Dame. I want to show this to you guys just to make this a complete show here are the images here of what I think is an actual vampire in a lead coffin with a spirit trapped inside the lead and the elongated skull now we did a show on this I'm not going to belabor this point but just suffice it to say we were saying that these were vampires inside the coffin in this video before the coffin was opened and it actually happened. So basically what they were doing here is they were doing renovations. And for some reason, they decided to dig down under the ground. Now this begs the question, doesn't it? This begs the question, was the fire intentional so that they could dig down into the ground to find something? that maybe they had located with ground penetrating radar and they needed a cover story to get in here and retrieve this thing without attracting too much attention. It begs the question, doesn't it? Because look how deep this thing is. It's probably four, three, about three feet underneath all these huge blocks that really didn't need to be moved to renovate the cathedral. This looks like pretty solid stone here. Why would they need to remove all this? And the stone being so thick, you know, was there even any damage to it that, you know, what was the reason why it needed to be removed is the question. So it says it was buried 3.3 feet. Of course, it's 3.3 feet, right? Found the sarcophagus and they still have not opened it yet. So some of the people in this story even say, that the reason, or they're saying not to open it. They're telling people not to open it. Let me find that part here. Why? Because they're saying that evil spirits could be unleashed. Should the coffin be open? Many on social media are calling for the coffin to remain unopened, proposing, often in jest, that evil forces might be unleashed. If the sanctity of the dead is disturbed. Now what are they really talking about here? And are these fears unfounded or are they legitimate? Well, according to vampire legend. Many were buried inside of lead coffins. Here's one particular story. From Lancashire, or it was actually in Peru, but it was a Lancashire vampire. Let's read this. 
because the vampires were trapped in these lead coffins, the undead they call them, to prevent them from escaping. One grave in the local cemetery in Pisco, a fishing town in South Peru, has a strange legend behind it. The grave holds the remains of Sarah Roberts, a Lancashire woman who died in 1913 and is reputed to be one of the brides of Dracula. According to the locals, Sarah was condemned as a witch and a vampire by officials from Blackburn, Lancashire in June of 1913. She was flung alive into her lead-lined coffin, but before the lid was shut, she cursed her judges and swore vengeance, an event that was to occur rather curiously in 1993. Fearful of the threats, Sarah was forbidden a burial in any of the local graveyards, leaving her husband was left to wander the world until Pisco eventually took her. After this, he disappeared mysteriously, never to be seen again. In 1993, there was an earthquake in Pisco. Sarah's grave was one of the few to survive the quake intact, all except for the gravestone that cracked. That was enough to give the legend new life. Pregnant women avoided the cemetery for fear that their unborn child would become a vehicle for the vampire spirit. Other braver individuals staked out the standard tools of the vampire hunter just in case Sarah decided to reappear. The supposed Bride of Dracula was conspicuous by her absence, probably because she was a simple cotton weaver. Records show that Sarah Roberts was born, bred, and married in Lancashire with no other incident. When her brother-in-law moved to Lima to manage a cotton mill, Sarah and her family visited him, and it was one of those trips that Sarah died. The only thing that was resurrected in 1993 was her peculiar legend which arose because of the misunderstanding, ignorance, and environmental disaster. As for her grieving husband, his disappearance is no great mystery. He simply returned to Lancashire and opened a grocer's shop. So here's one of many stories of vampires basically interred into these lead coffins. Now, if you're still not seeing any connection to vampires in the royal family, think again. Because King Dracula has now ascended the throne. King Charles is a descendant of the real life Dracula. Now, if you didn't know this, and we'll cover this more on tomorrow's show. The word Akul means a sharp pointed element so essentially dracula means pierced with fangs or a needle a sharp pointed element and so when we do the decode tomorrow on the faculty which has a cool in it as well you will see the sharp pointed element repeated. Now, it's interesting because history tries to downplay Dracul, Prince Dracul. And they try to say, oh, you know, he was just a crazy ruler who put the head of his, uh, you know, the people that he conquered onto spikes. And he was feared it was to keep people out. So he'd put the dead on these spikes. Basically, he crucified them. And they try to downplay Dracul's lust for blood in drinking and eating blood. But his very name means a piercing sharp instrument. You can't get away from that. And there are many other connections as well. But here we are. And King Charles is in fact a descendant of Dracula. Former Prince of Wales is heir to the Vlad Impaler's bloodline. He even has property there. And let's read some of this article here. Because you have to ask yourself, is this why the royal family is buried in lead caskets? The royal family has links to several countries across Europe, including Romania. Turns out that King Charles is the descendant of the real-life Dracula, formerly known as Prince Charles, Prince of Wales. 
Charles III actually owned several properties in Transylvania. He's the heir to the Vlad Impaler's bloodline. The ruthless prince, also known as Vlad Tepes and Vlad III Dracula, is known for his cruelty toward his enemies and impaling them on stakes. He lived in the 15th century and is said to have inspired Bram Stoker for his famous Count Dracula. In 1462, following a battle, Vlad left a field filled with thousands of impaled victims. More than 530 years later, in 1998, King Charles found out about his links to the Romanian ruler. He is, in fact, the great-grandson 16 times removed through the consort of George V, Queen Mary. Genealogical tree in the British Chronicles written by David Hughes supports this claim. Says Prince Charles, very fond of Romania, especially of the Transylvania region. It was after this first visit to Transylvania in 1998 that he found out about the connection to Vlad the Impaler, a connection that he is apparently very proud of. Through the Prince of Wales Foundation, Prince Charles has done plenty of charity work in Transylvania, especially in the fields of sustainable development. Now, it'd be interesting to find out where his property is did he buy dracula's castle like you have to ask yourself so we obviously looked at that in the previous video which i should have probably played after this video but uh, let's keep watching i don't know the answer to that but this is really really weird so what is this here this might be one of the properties it doesn't say there's the white horse of revelation Apollo's horse Now there is a third video out there where I actually go inside of these properties And we look on the walls and things and go around the grounds in Google Earth King Charles now owns several properties in the Romanian region in Viscri in the Zalunuli Valley in Malankrav and in Breb these villages have now become Popular with tourists. Okay, so these are where the places are. I'm gonna look those up after we get off the show today and Find them and I'll link all of this in the pinned comment for you guys in case you want to do additional research um, So this is very interesting. I'll plot these in Google Earth and see if I find any weird alignments or if I find anything in these these little in the history of some of these towns that could point to more information and we did find the 96 degree alignment and then his mother died at 96 years old. But this now has become front and center on the world stage as Queen Elizabeth has supposedly passed away, put into a lead casket. And King Charles is now basically the king of the world, the king of the north. Now, the blood sucking jokes are already starting. In case you were still not convinced, everybody knows this. This man from Michigan is preparing blood-sucking lamprey pie for the king. Let's read this. Lamprey pie, Michigan man, prepares to ship invasive blood-sucking fish to England for the king's coronation. Now we'll probably have to decode that coronation. I'm sure there'll be more clues. One man's poison is another man's meat or pie. Hmm... Michiganders despise the invasive lamprey fish, but will ship some to England for the king for the new king's pie. This is just weird. The death of the English monarch portends the crowning of another, and that means giving King Charles III the gift of a pie filled with Michigan flavor. An invasive species, lampreys have decimated game species in the Great Lakes. They have been the fishing industry's public enemy number one for more than a century. Now, this is probably a big nothing story. But the fact is, is they're, they're comparing, basically, King Charles to these blood-sucking lamprey fish. That's the joke here. Okay? So it's weird. Now, a couple of you asked me to look at the Queen's funeral procession. I'm like, Casey, you've got to look at the Queen's funeral possession. Possession, I said. Freudian slip there. Instead of pre-session. Uh, and. It appears as though. Many of you recognized all of the purple. 
So that was pretty much it. I'll put links to both of these shows so you guys can check them out. And maybe even the third show where I look at the, um, where I look at the actual properties and go inside in Google Earth and look on the walls and things of places that he actually stays out in Transylvania. I'll have to find that video. So what's apparent to me is that Charles is at the root of the Corona Nation. It's always been about the Corona crown, the crowned serpent. And at one point, at the end of the coronation, the camera closes in on these 11 people. Now, there's another little boy here at the end that's cut off. But here is the scene. The 11. And actually, they show it here. But they show the extra little boy here in this article. Right? So there's 12 total. But when you show what they actually showed, which is this, there's only 11. And they show this scene as nine planes fly over. Nine rainbow planes. Nine planes, 11 people. Nine planes, 11 people. Wow. So, there you go. The Corona Serpent, the bloodline of Dracula. The serpent has risen, bitten the world with the two fangs, the two pokey pokes, injecting the venom. Now, tomorrow, we will be getting back between the headlines. Lots of stuff to catch up on. And then Tuesday, we will be back on the Honey Milk Ranch here at my house, finishing up the mini split ground mount retrofit. I'm excited to show you guys that. Some of you guys like the homesteading videos. Uh, you know, God is good and you can have joy in this life, but you have to follow what he wants you to do. Not living in sinful places or around a bunch of bad frequencies. So we're going to be doing lots of projects here on the Honey Milk Ranch. And I'll be showing you guys as much as I possibly can. I have an angry hummingbird. I don't know what's up with this hummingbird, but he does not like me. He like zooms at me. Almost like he's going to like attack me or something. He's probably got, maybe I, I don't know what happened. I was up there sealing some holes. Maybe he had a nest up there and he's upset. I have no idea. But anyway, hummingbirds are aggressive here. Different than the California hummingbirds. <laughs> Uh, my goodness. Okay, I'm back in the chat with you guys. Good morning. That was no broom in the hand. It was a stick. Plain stick, someone said. Okay. Why would someone be wearing a cloak with the hood pulled over it? It looked to me like the Grim Reaper. And that's what they describe it as in the Independent article. I don't know. Ah. <sighs> All right, feed him. He's probably hungry, yeah. He's literally, like, the hummingbird is trying to feed on my folding chairs. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Like, so the folding chairs I leave open just because they're already under the porch. And so there's those little uh, netting, the netting, that's I guess the word for it. And it basically is where the cup holders go, right? Well, the hummingbird sticks his beak in there and, like, he's trying to eat the chair, the flower. He thinks it's a giant flower because it's bright red. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. I may have sealed the bird's eggs in the hole. Oh, boy. Well, that could have been what happened. <sighs> Poor hummingbird. Now I feel bad. Should I go in there and pull the foam out and see if I can rescue it? It's in a really bad spot. It's really difficult to get to. It's between kind of sandwiching between the houses. And back a ways, I barely fit in there. Like, I have to squeeze in there. So, he'll make some new eggs, I think. Thanks, Chris. Much love. Thanks for joining the channel membership. 
They need to feed every hundred seconds. Oh, boy. Tiny bugs, you sealed the nest. Oh, boy. Please don't be mad at me. I just... Really, what I was trying to do was get at the uh, the hornets. You do not want hornets' nests in a hole in your house because you'll never get rid of them. So... I saw the hornets climbing in there, and I was like, I need to basically seal this crack. So, animals have been acting weird everywhere. Thanks, Marcy. Death left the building. Now, zombie land apocalypse. Now, let's talk a little bit about more about this cloaked figure and what it could represent on a spiritual level. Okay, because we've been talking a lot about these churches, haven't we? Westminster Abbey. And we talked about the umbrella in the churches. When you look up in the center of a church, you can see what appears to be the inside of an umbrella. And we've done a video on this showing you this. And we showed you Pan's pipes inside the church, which is the organs. They are the hollow reeds that Pan harvested from Artemis and Syrinx. Syrinx was the nymph of Artemis. And her nymph, Syrinx, was turned into a field of reeds, according to ancient legend. Pan then cut those reeds off to form his Pan pipes. So there's all this demonic symbolism inside of these churches. Now, I can attest to this. I actually went into, when I was in France, we, Mark and I visited several churches. And inside, there was demonic imagery. I'm like, why would they put Satan, pictures of Satan and demons inside of a, a Catholic or Orthodox church? And then I began to realize what was happening. This is how they will deceive the masses to accept the Antichrist. They've already taken over the churches, you guys. The churches were taken over a long, long time ago. Now, what most people don't realize is that churches are actually laid out in the shape of a cross. There are side wings which form the cross member and then the main thoroughfare of the church which forms the vertical upright post this has always been the case for some reason i was just figuring this out a few years ago but from the sky these old gothic churches look like crosses so we have a cross with umbrella like ceilings with the tip of the umbrella being the spire where the cross comes out through the top of the church that part of the umbrella is called the ferrule. The very same piece that is inside a hypodermic needle called the ferrule ring. You have Pan's pipes which deliver the venom. The pipes are hollow hypodermic needles. And in fact, when you look at a, an organ pipe, it has a slit cut in it, doesn't it? which looks like some of the needles that have the slit cut on the side. This is unbelievable, you guys. All this revelation. So, it's already happened. The deception, the false religion, Babylon, whatever you want to call it, is all around us. Now, I'm not saying that your personal local church is involved in all this. I'm talking about corporate churches. I'm talking about church and state governments. Obviously, we saw a huge you know, relationship between the church and state during this coronation. It was front and center that the two are in bed with one another. And so it's undeniable. Who rules this world? Satan. We already know that based on our earlier discussions in the show. So if the church is buddying up with Satan then they're part of Satan too, right? I mean, there's really no other way to slice it. There's really no other way to slice it. So, what could the dark figure 
that ran through the church mean spiritually? Let's see who gets it first. I'll let you guys answer this question. What does the dark figure running through Westminster Abbey mean on a spiritual level? After everything we just talked about. Remember, Vlad wants to inject us with the poison dark waters, which pretty much already happened. Didn't it? Let's see who gets what the spiritual significance of that dark figure running through. Okay, let's see here. Death is coming. Death, Antichrist. Well, it just confirms to me again that the enemy is in the church, right? He's right there. He ran right through the central hall. To me, that's what that, that this all means. That the church has been basically infiltrated. All right, you guys. Well, we'll be back tomorrow with Between the Headlines. And then I'll show you guys my uh, mini split uh, cabinet reveal. I've been working on it. I'm waiting on a couple more parts, but I'm already starting to edit together what I've worked on so far. So I'm really anxious to show you that. I love each and every one of you guys. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care and be safe.